good afternoon. Uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today in today's episode of Lunchtime Learning here on the Embrilliance Facebook page and eventually posted to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, all the videos that we do here on Lunchtime Learning are edited and uploaded to the Lunchtime Learning playlist on uh, the Embrilliance YouTube channel. So I think I put that link in the description so that you can catch it afterwards. The other thing to remember is that if you are watching this on Facebook and you'd like to save it so you can watch it again later, click on the dot, dot, dot in the upper right hand corner and choose save video. And that will allow you to save um, it to your playlist. So what are we going to talk about today? Today we're talking about Alphatrix and how to map a monogram font and talk a little bit about about the um, features of Alphatrix, which is a module of the Embrilliance platform. You can find out all about the details, ins and outs uh, about Alphatrix on our website. You can also watch the program overview video, which is available on our YouTube channel. So let's pop on into the software and see what we're talking about here. Now, here we have I just have the screen open, but let's just start with a brand new design page. So I close that out and a brand new design page. So we have nothing here. The Alpha Tricks, when you add this module to the platform done by simply adding your serial number under help serial numbers, you get a new button here and it's right here at the very top of the screen. It looks like a needle that has an ABC next to it. Now, what happens when you click on this button is that it opens up a dialog box that asks you what you would like to do. It says, would you like to begin importing a font? What this means is that if you have a design collection that are individual design files and you want to turn it into a keyboard font, you can use this dialog to do so. So let's see how easy that is because I'm going to choose, yes, I'd like to begin importing a font. First of all, you need to know where that folder of embroidery designs is located. I happen to pull one out from that I purchased from someplace and I have it on my desktop. Yours may be in a designs folder or wherever you have saved it, but mine is called Heart Monogram One and Inside that one is a folder called part one and inside that folder are subfolders for each of the various sizes. So if we wanted to install or map more than one size, you have to do this multiple times. This particular monogram comes as a two, three, four, and five inch. So I would have to map it four times, one for each size. Let's check what the two inch size has. Inside the two inch folder, they have a subfolder with the DST files in it and one with the PES files in it. It doesn't matter which you choose because it should be, I usually just choose the one that is most common or that I'm going to be using. It doesn't matter because Embrilliance will save off. I do tend to look at the designs before I import them because if something is crazy, like I don't like the colors or if I see extra stitches in one of the formats, then I would use a different format for my mapping. Now in this folder are the PES files, all the two inch sizes. And as you see here, there's a whole bunch of files here because this is a monogram font, which consists of three sets of letters. These are the right hand side. Further up, we have the left hand side. And starting off, we have the center files. So we want, we need to map these accordingly using the little mapping wizard that is part of Alphatrix. So first we have to get these files into that wizard. So I'm going to click on select all and click on the import button. That brings them here on the screen. And the first thing you should notice here is that they don't, the software doesn't know what these are. Now, it's just brought them all in here as characters. So the software can't read. We need to basically tell the software what these characters are. They are alphabets. 
This is the A, the B, the C. What We are the ones that know what these characters are. Can you simply click on a letter and type capital A? Yes. Capital B. Yes. You can go through and manually type each one of these letters. That is what we call mapping. You are assigning the key that you hit on the keyboard to the design that is shown in between the selection box. However, in Brilliance, in Alphatrix, has created shortcut buttons. That's what these little mapping buttons here at the top say. And they're done by recognition, meaning this is an A, this is a B, this is a C, because you see it. So the pattern most likely is all capitals, one right after another. That's what this first button says. If this happened to be a small a, a small b, a small c, you would want to use the small letters. Same as if they were capital small, capital small. But in a monogram, it's all capital letters. That's just the way it is. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to have my very first one selected, and I'm going to click on the A to Z button. Now the next, before I do that, I need to pay attention to one more step because this is a monogram. There's an MGM button here that has a pull down menu and it says, what location do you want these letters assigned to? The default here is center because if it was a regular alphabet, it, there is no left or there is no right. But in a monogram, you have a left, a right, and a center. So we have it set to the center. That's This is my capital A. I'm going to click on my A to Z button and watch what happens. It has assigned all those letters, capital A through Z, and it stops because it, it only has A through Z. It's only going to go so far. Now we're looking at these next set of letters, and they look like the left-hand side, again, capital letters. So from this MGM pull-down, I'm going to choose left, and I'm going to again click on the A to Z button, because that's going to map these letters. So I'm just clicked on the Y. That Y is set as a capital Y in the left-hand position. That's what I'm telling it to do. Now, finally, I have the A through Z again, so I have to make sure I select that. I need to change my MGM to the right because that's where I want these to be mapped and click on the A to Z. That's the mapping process. Now we have to go think about, well, how do we want this to show up in our font list? That's where the name comes into play. So it pulls the name of the folder, which happened to be PES because that was the name of the folder it was. But we probably want to give it a more logical name. This was the two inch heart monogram, correct? So I'm going to type in two, I-N for inch, and type in heart monogram. You can give it any name you want, but that's the name I'm going to choose to give it. So works for me. <laughs> that's, that's the name I'm going to choose. I'm going to click on save font, and then we're going to go into the software and see what happens. Because before we even get that far, let's look at this. Scroll through. Do you see how all the letters are saved? And looks what happens when you went to the left side. There's a visual that tells you I've saved this A to the left, B to the left, C to the left, etc. And then the rights. So this is actually going to show up in my font list with all of my other BX and installed fonts with this particular name. Let me close the dialog. I'm going to click on the lettering tool. It brings up block font. And I'm going to go up here to the top and look at that. Right here at the top, it says two inch heart monogram. So if I choose that, it sort of looks like a heart, but it doesn't. First of all, it did bring up the ABC. So if I type in my monogram, which is LSA, it brings it in there, but it doesn't really look like a heart. Let's go back in and edit it. Look at that dialog box to see what I can do to change it. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit the delete key just to get rid of this lettering object here. Clear off my screen. I'm going to click on the ABC button to go back into Alphatrix. 
And this time when it says, would you like to begin importing a font? I'm going to say no, because I want to edit the font that I just worked on. Now, this happens to be at the top of my list. That's why it shows up first because it was happened to be there. But if you click on the pull down menu here, this will show you all the fonts that you have there. So if it wasn't the very top one, you would want to scroll down to find the one that you needed. So we're going to work on this two inch one. Let's look at a couple other of the controls here. We have the with the centering. This all worked fine. We typed in our monogram, it bought in my three letters, left, center, and right. But they were kind of cattywampus and I'd have to move them around. That's because there's an option here that says baseline. When you're typing regular text, the baseline is just like in grammar school. It puts the bottom of the letters right along that baseline. Well, most monograms are set, the baseline is set to be in the center so that the left and the right and the the centers are aligned. So let's try, let's see what happens when I choose center for this. And I'm going to click save font. I'm going to close this dialog box. I'm going to click on my big letter A, bring up my thing. And it brought in the same font and it's almost there because it, it, it actually, all the centers of the letters are aligned. You can see the dots are all in the center. But this particular monogram really wants the tops to be aligned because of the way it has to force the heart shape. So back to our drawing board. We're going to, let me hit the delete key to delete this object. I'm going to click on the alpha tricks file. I do not want to begin importing a font. I'm going to choose my baseline here to be top. And already I can see, oh, all those little heart, all the little center parts are now lined up at the top. I think this is going to be perfect for what I want to do. Save my font, close my dialog box, click on the big letter A, and look at that. It's automatically lined up. But there's one more thing I can do because sometimes, and this is true when you have script BX fonts, or any alphabets that you know, we would have to use the little slider bar to make sure our spaces were. And every, if you have to do that every single time to adjust the spacing, maybe we want to adjust it in the dialog box. So one more time, I'm gonna select this, hit the delete key. Alpha tricks, no, here's our monogram. Do you see where it says lettering spacing? It's set to a number 10, which means 10% space in between the letters. And that's the default setting. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's a little bit too much. And you can adjust it down just a little bit. So I didn't want to go too close, too much to, I don't want to set it to zero, because if you set it to zero, that's good for script letters, because you really want those to connect if possible. But this is a monogram, and I want a little bit of space, but not too much. So let's try six. Just pulled the number out. Again, save the font, close the dialog box, click on the big letter A, and that looks so much better. I don't have to do any adjusting. I think that space is perfect, no matter what monogram it is that I type into, it's ready to go. So hopefully you learned a little bit about alpha tricks. This is now saved in our font list. You can go through any of the fonts and make the adjustments that you want and um, go from there. <laughs> so thank you for taking some time with me during your lunchtime break to learn a little bit about your brilliant software. Be sure to check us out on our YouTube channel. We have a lunchtime learning playlist where you can learn so much about all the programs that you have. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care. Bye.